Whenever we speak about organ donation, uh, at one side of the story there's joy and life and at the other side of the story there's tragedy and loss and, and sadly for you that was your part of this. Um, and Jemima, your daughter, this is the, the 10th of March 2012 and she had a pain in her head and, and collapsed. And, and, what, and what was it? What did it turn out it to be? It was a giant brain aneurysm. Okay. So it was this huge um, bubble of blood that formed, if you like, and it had burst and um, it had destroyed most of the left side of her, mm. her brain. So um, she, was, she was looked after amazingly well and rushed off for um, emergency treatment and obviously the consultants thought there was hope. They all, you know, they do the best job they can. There's yeah, always hope. Um, but un unfortunately, she never ever came round mm. and... Um, yeah. Yeah, sadly lost her. Well, so, uh, at what point, had you, had you before this, that terrible day, had you discussed organ donation as a family? We had. I don't, it was one of those random conversations, something had happened, um, a sort of friend of a family had been in a similar situation and wanted to donate and couldn't for some reason, and we were sort of talking about it and, and how quite, it's quite restrictive sometimes because you have to die in certain conditions conditions mm. so that your organs can be used um, and we we're just talking about it in general and of course both our girls were quite young and they'd never heard of anything like this before you know it was a horrible idea taking something out of somebody and putting it in somebody else and um, but after the initial sort of shock and when we discussed it and Jemima being a little bit older said oh no that would I, I would I would I'd do that so. so you knew you knew her wishes, which is extraordinary, really, because, like you said, yes. nobody ever talks about this sort no. of thing. So it's, it's incredible that you did. When the time came, however, and that decision was then put in place, um, how did that feel? How did that feel for you and your partner? Well, because my husband had anticipated that this was going to be discussed because she was obviously not going to recover, he did talk to me about it um, privately and say, you know, they're going to approach us about organ donation, we need to talk about it and decide what we're doing. Um, so it wasn't a shock, but it it still seems very wrong, you know, because she, she was still sort of ostensibly a, a breathing and... Yeah. Um, and the parent, you, and, you're protecting her. Yes. Right. And, you know, her heart was beating and you think, oh, I can't be... Dis it seems terribly yeah, wrong. Yeah, no, that must have been... But, Knowing that she wasn't going to recover, you know, you do have to think about it and knowing how she would feel, we knew we could say yes. And the organ donation team are incredibly sensitive and they take you through each stage carefully. You can discuss each item individually mm. um, and you're allowed to stipulate what happens if in the event it's not used, what you want to happen to that organ. Um, so it all felt very easy because they make it feel you know, straightforward, but at the same time, at the back of your head, you're saying, this shouldn't be happening. Yeah, yes. of course, the pain of it all, yeah. absolutely. But it did happen, and uh, what an incredible legacy she's left behind. Absolutely. I mean, we didn't... I didn't realise that um, 2.6, apparently, is the average number of recipients for each mm. donation. I thought that seemed quite low, but I, I didn't know. Um, no, I so to know. hear that she was a, a record holder for the number of recipients was quite extraordinary. Highest we number thought that of... was normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Highest number on record. Yeah. Um, her heart went to a five-year-old boy. 14-year-old was given her lungs. Her liver was split between two boys aged 10 months and five. Two people aged 19 and 24 received her kidneys. 40-year-old man was given her pancreas and small bowel has changed the life of a three-year-old boy. Um, eye tissue was used to restore the eyesight of three people. And it is e extraordinary to read what yes, she's done. Yes, it is. And it's lovely to think that, you know, she is going on, you know, even though she obviously won't have children, but you sort of feel there's bits of her that will continue yeah. in a different way, and it's lovely. Yeah. And it seems so absurd that we haven't got to, to, to the point where it is an opt-out system rather than the opt-in system mm. that we've got now, because I suppose, really, the opting out means that it takes that decision away at the worst possible time of your life. It also means we're all now going to have to start talking about it a lot more. Um, you know, so that pe people do know your wishes, because I think even with the opt, a opt out, um, even if you've said yes, I think close relatives will still be able to say no if they feel it's wrong. Right. Um, so I think 
you know, we still need to, particularly for parents, I think we'll have that. Still work to do. Yeah, still, still need to talk about it. It still needs to be addressed and, and, and death in general should be um, discussed. Well, you said we, that's the thing you regret the most, is actually yes, not Yes, I know, it's just not having that conversation. And, um, what would you have said, though? What would you... I don't know, it's just because she had these little kind of funny premonitions and this, I could sense the fear because there were little things she said and later on when we found her diaries, we read them, you know, that she didn't feel she's ever going to grow up. Um, there are these things about the age and number 13, and because um, that was her age. I felt very sort of cold every time. You know, you kind of, your, your heart stops because you sort of think, I can't acknowledge this or talk about this. Let's sweep it under the carpet yeah. and talk about happy things. Mm. But I think if I had, for her, it would have been reassuring and it wouldn't have been a frightening thing.